Okay, right. So first off, I really like communication. I like people talking to each other, not necessarily while I'm speaking, um, but I really like people in communication. So we're just going to do a really short drill to start, and you probably all hate me for this, but you'll like me at the end. What I want you to do is find two people in this room that you don't know and say hello to them and tell them your name. This is going to get noisy because you're probably going to have to shout to people across the room. That's totally fine. And you've got five seconds to do it. Are you ready? You're going to find two people and say hello to them that you don't know. All right, ready? Go. <laughs>
um, basically earning nothing. So I worked full time as a volunteer and I did community work. I helped all sorts of people. I helped people get off drugs. I helped people change their lives. I helped people with their marriages. I helped people improve their business. I helped people with study problems. I helped people with being criminals and not being criminals anymore. Um, I did a lot of things. And what it did was it really taught me a lot about the human spirit and what it means to be able to win, get over barriers, and do things which you love. And working as a volunteer for 11 years is highly recommended. If you ever get a chance, do it. You might not want to do 11 years, I can understand. But it's definitely an experience. And it's just this whole help thing. You know, you find people that really help, that want to help. And you know people like that. And those people are some of the happiest people in the world, aren't they? When they're out there helping. And we have a wonderful thing in the Ruby community. We have this thing called open source. I mean, it's not the Ruby communities, obviously. But we have this wonderful thing called open source. You can just help. You don't have to ask permission to help. You don't have to get approval to help. You don't even you know, need the author of the gems um, OK to help. With GitHub and with Mail, uh, with Ruby Gems and with open source, you can just help. You can fork the repository, you can fix it, you can send a pull request, and everyone's happy. Um, and I know I'm spoke, speaking for every open source developer when I say we want your help. Uh, we want your help writing new gems, we want your help contributing to existing gems. I had a student come and ask me yesterday what would be my advice to him as he's starting his career? What should he do? You know, and it's a great question. And what I told him was start developing in the open source community. I can guarantee you, if you're doing lots of commits in the open source world and you're a Ruby developer, you will never be looking for a job. It's true. That guy there will never be looking for a job. <laughs> he probably fights off jobs. He's probably got this anti-spam job-seeking filter at the front. <laughs> it's like, hi, I've noticed you do some development and wondering if you'd like to start our entry-level position as junior Ruby developer. Charles <laughs> How many of those do you get a month? Oh. Yeah, exactly right. I get one saying, hi, we're, we're thinking about hiring some Ruby developers in your country. Would you like to start? I'm like, do, do you even look at my website? I'm a director of a company and I run it. <laughs> so then I, I started Reinteractive, which is a Ruby development shop. There's lots of them. Um, but we've got probably, that's oh, not probably, we have the best development team in the world. I may be biased. But, you have to check that out for yourself, but I think they're pretty awesome. I've got 10 guys in Sydney, all over Australia. And then what we also did was we started Still Alive, stillalive.com, which was why I had my theme song playing at the start, which was from Portal, for those that would recognise it, called Still Alive. And uh, Still Alive was created out of Rails Rumble, actually. And who knows about Rails Rumble? Okay, Rails Rumble is a 48-hour event where you start on hour zero with an idea, and at the end of 48 hours, you put a product into production. So we decided to put a full application stack production monitoring website service into in 48 hours, and we did. And what this application does is basically lets you do things like running um, Cucumber-like acceptance tests against your production environment every minute of every day. So instead of just doing a ping check on your front page, it actually will log into your website, check out something in a car, sign up as a user, do anything, so it does a full stack test. So we produced that in 48 hours and then spent two years making it work properly. So the last thing is, over the last, since September I've spoken at 22 business events, um, some small, some big, that's a lot. Uh, I'm writing a book on management and I love helping people. If any of you have any questions about this, please hold them to the end. But even if you don't get to ask it in this forum, Hit me up after. I'll be here all day today, and um, if I'm doing nothing but answering questions about how to improve your business or how to improve your life, I'll be totally fine with that. I am yours for the day. Make use of it and ask me whatever you want. So this talk is not about Ruby. I use a little bit in the titles because you guys are Ruby developers and I'm a Ruby developer and Ruby's cool and you can read Ruby and it looks like English. But this talk is about how can you improve yourself and the organization that you work for Get to a different level. Get to a point where you're really winning and you're really happy in life. The source of this talk comes from many areas. It comes from my own experiences, 12 years of management, both in the commercial and volunteer worlds. 
It comes from a lot of hard-won mistakes and reading many, many books and also the Hubbard management technology. Now, Mr. Hubbard's known for a few things. He's known for making a religion. He's known for writing a lot of fiction work. But a little known fact is he wrote a very useful set of management tools that really work. And they actually work in a very pragmatic way. And in fact, they work so well that when you're using them, it sort of feels like you're cheating. And I like cheating. I mean, I like winning. So what is winning? What is winning? You know, a lot of people might not have ever thought about this. You think of a sporting legend, and one of the great things about being in India is I can say the word cricket, and you guys know what I'm talking about. Now, I go to America and I say cricket, and they go, what's that? And I go, well, it's sort of like baseball, but awesome. And uh, then they start throwing rocks at me, or I don't understand. So I thought I'd give a really great photo of obvious winning in cricket, all right? From one of the greatest batsmen in the world. So... <laughs> <laughs> the Tri Nation series wasn't that awesome. I mean, I know you guys lost, but I don't want to rub it in, but you lost. <laughs> I think you came last. No, but it was actually really good. I, I was actually watching every match of that series, and I could not pick who was going to win. I mean, I actually thought Sri Lanka was going to win, to be honest, but Aussies came through because we could. No, I put that up there just for the laughs. That's the picture that I wanted to show. He has spent a lifetime achieving this purpose. The fact that he did a hundred test centuries is just, that's just a goal. Do you know what I mean? And I bet you, in that picture, he's probably experiencing relief more than, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? He's sitting there on 99, right? Oh my God. <laughs> the whole world is watching him, including, you know, one billion of his closest friends in India. <laughs> but he wins, right? And he's consistently won. And why is that? What makes him different to us? What makes him different to a cricketer that doesn't win? That's what I'm going to talk about. But first, let's define what win is. A good definition of win is to be successful or victorious. You know, so if you succeed at something, yeah, you've won. But then you have to define success. Because if you just define one word with another word, it doesn't really mean anything, right? So, success is the accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. That's straight out of a dictionary, you can look it up. So if you succeed at something, you're achieving some sort of aim or some sort of purpose in life. Is that real to everyone? Does that make sense? Yeah? Good. Then what is purpose? Well, a good definition of purpose is the reason for which something is done or created, or why it exists. So that's the reason, it's the underlying goals. See, Sachin wouldn't have done the 100th test century on the purpose of getting 100 test centuries. Does that make sense? It, it's not a reason to do it. The reason would have been to be the greatest batsman that ever lived. Or something like that. And he is, by every statistic that you can look at, except Bradman's 99.9. Wouldn't that suck? Getting, do you know about that? The last ball. So, D Sir Donald Bradman is one of the most famous Australian cricketers, he's a batsman, and he had an average of 100, which means that on every game he played, his average score was 100, which is just unreal. And he was facing the last ball, and all he needed off that ball was one run to keep his average. It was his last match of his life, and the bowler bowled it to him underarm <coughs> to stop him from being able to hit it hard enough to score a run. And so he ended his career with an average of 99.9. Wouldn't you just be like, God damn it! <laughs> you! Come here. <laughs> Your ball is over there. <laughs> no, but in those days, cricketers were really polite. You would have said, well played, sir. And walked off again. <laughs> so purpose is the reason you're doing something. The reason why it is. What's your purpose? It's not to make money. I can tell you that now. And I'll explain why in a minute. But what is your purpose? You look at the really successful people in life, they all have a very clear purpose. They all have something that they're trying to achieve and get done. All of them. And if you look at the derivation of the word purpose, it comes from Latin. And it means to put, put or set forth. So you're putting something out there, you're going, that's my purpose, there it is, I'm going for that. We're going to talk about this. What's your purpose? What is your purpose? 
Do you know what your purpose is? Have you ever, ever thought about it? A lot of people haven't. And I tell you, the people that have are doing really well in life. Or, it's not that clear cut. But if you're here and you know what your purpose is and you're following it, your chance of success goes like this. If you're already a really useless person in life and you know your purpose, you might only get up to the point where the really awesome person sort of is without knowing their purpose. You know, like if you're going around in life and stealing things and you're being criminal and that sort of stuff, knowing your purpose isn't going to make you successful long term. Do you know what I mean? You still have to work hard, you still have to put effort in. It's not like purpose is just some magical thing that suddenly you'll be successful. But knowing your purpose and following your purpose will make you more able to achieve your goals. And I ask people what their purpose is and they give me different things. Yeah, that's a nice house. Some people have a purpose of I want to own my house. And I tell you, if there's a house in the world you want to own, it's this one. It's got 103 rooms, five swimming pools. The uh, study is plated in gold on the floor because, you know, everyone needs a gold plated study floor. <laughs> there's a squash court, a bowling alley, a tennis court, a 50 seat cinema for that, you know, small gathering of friends when you want to watch the latest blockbuster movie. Uh, it has, of course, a swimming pool that's there. It's oh, the helipad. Um, underground parking for your eight limousines because you know you need that. And my favourite part about it is the heated marble driveway. Because um, when you go out at night and you're walking on the marble driveway, marble is cold, you know, so you need it heated. I mean, obviously, right? <laughs> this is another good purpose, and in fact, yeah, screw it, actually, this is my purpose. No, that's a nice car. It goes very fast, it looks awesome, but I wouldn't try diving it around. You know, actually, I was really, um, I'm really proud of an achievement. I, uh, I followed Charles' advice and I went down to the Garni Memorial, which I actually didn't even know was here until he told me. And then I went down to the Garni Memorial, which I love that guy. And then I walked back from the Garni Memorial along Naga Road. And I actually managed to cross Naga Road by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I was then talking and, and Judy was very helpful to point out oh, it was probably a public holiday, so there wasn't much traffic. So, yeah, thanks. <laughs> but the other point, actually, the way I crossed the road, to be really fair, is I just found a 12 year old who needed to cross the road and followed her. <laughs> but it was really funny though, like, 4,000 cars coming down the road at full speed, and like, she starts crossing the road. I'm like, are you serious? Really? <laughs> on Friday night with some awesome guys from Forthworks <laughs> and on the way back <laughs> he just does this U-turn right and we're suddenly going in the opposite direction on the same side of the road and I'm like how does this even work you know? <laughs> and he's like well actually you know when people are learning to drive it actually causes problems because they try to be too polite and like backs up all the traffic because they won't let anyone know so yeah that's not your purpose what about money? Money, I hate to tell you, is not your purpose. It might be a purpose. I'm not saying money's bad. Money's actually a lot of fun. But it's not a purpose. It doesn't motivate you. And that's the key thing. Your purpose will motivate you. Your purpose is what will make you come back to work every day. Your purpose is what will make you fight through those barriers. The times when you don't think you'll be able to get it done. Your purpose will help you with that. And the reason, there's a reason for that. It's called the scale of motivation. The scale of motivation starts at the top with duty. Then it goes personal conviction, personal gain, and the lowest form of motivation is money. This is why a small group of soldiers who are dedicated to win and look after their homeland will always beat a group of mercenaries. You know, you've seen the movie or the story about the 300 in Sparta defeating the, almost the entire Persian army. Why? Well, the Persian army were there for money. They were a purchased army. They were assembled and subjugated, not even for money sometimes, even lower than that. You know, they were there in slavery. But the 300 were there with duty. They knew they had to handle this. 
So where does your life sit? You look at the really successful people in life and you'll find that they're working right up the top there in duty. You know? You look at... I mean, Charles is a great example. I'm going to use you a few times tonight. He's not doing Jaber Ruby for the money. Right? He's doing it because he believes in it. It's something that he wants to achieve. Do I have to change? In their, in their chosen field. They're doing it right up there. They're up there in duty or personal conviction. You know, I said I went to the Gandhi Memorial. I did. I took this photo. He's an incredible person. Incredible. This guy is known throughout the world. Every person in Australia knows who Gandhi is. I would dare say a fair percentage of the world knows who Gandhi is. The only people that wouldn't know who Gandhi is would not have a schooling system. The, the things that this person achieved is incredible. Where was he on this scale? Did he do it for the money? No. I've been there. I've been to the house. I've been to the place where he was interned, incarcerated. He had a little mat and a room. He, all he wore was a shawl. He didn't do it for the money. Did he do it for personal gain? Did he do it for personal conviction? Maybe. But the real reason he did what he did was for duty. He believed that is what he had to do. And I can't speak for him, but I'm sure he would agree with me. But you look at any famous person in the world, anyone that's made a lasting contribution to humanity has done it for duty or personal conviction at the very least. Everyone else who's just doing it for the money, they're a flash in the pan. They appear, they disappear. I'm not saying money is evil. Money is not evil. But I'm saying your purpose is not money. And if you can work out what your motivation is and work out what your purpose is. See, as soon as you work out what your purpose is and what you love doing, you can move up this scale. Sure, you can do your job and you can get money and you can get an income and you can be happy and you can be able to buy things. But if every day you come to work because you believe it, because you want to do what you're doing, because you love doing it, it'll be so much more fun. See, this is actually one of the awesome things about being a Ruby developer, because Ruby is fun. And you get to produce these beautiful things with it. And it sort of moves you. Ruby developers tend to sort of be more in personal conviction than down at money. You know, you get paid well as a Ruby developer, but you don't find a lot of Ruby developers doing it for the money. You don't. You find a lot of PHP developers doing it for the money. <laughs> but, you know, it's this personal conviction, it's beautiful code, it's believing, getting the conventions done, it's creating awesome products. Personal conviction, duty. So let me give you some examples of this. Apple's purpose. Well, Apple is a corporation. Their purpose I mean, at the, at the bottom level, is to make money for their shareholders, okay? So that is money-related. But, Steve's purpose. In a talk that he gave, it's on YouTube, and you can grab it at that link, and you can write that down quickly, it should be easy. In 1997, he talks about the core values of Apple. And this is sort of while he's rebooting Apple. And he said, we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. Whoa! What a purpose for a company to have. This is at the start of his Think Different campaign. When he got, you know, the, we believe in the artists, the misfits, the people that don't, you know. What a purpose. Now, if you're a developer and you had two companies to choose from that you wanted to work for, and one had that purpose, and the other one said, our purpose is to make affordable computers for everyone. Or, or that's actually a pretty good purpose. But our purpose is to make computers that beat our competition. Right? Which one would you go work for? You'd obviously go work for that. I mean, obviously, right? Why? Because it aligns with everyone's basic purposes, you know, of achieving something, of getting out there. It's much higher on the scale of motivation. It's up there at personal conviction. If you listen to some of Steve's talks, he talks at the motivational level of duty. He believes that he needs to communicate what he's saying to his crowd. 
and really impart something to them. Motivation is a powerful thing. Like for our company, we make websites, but that's not a purpose. That's more like a purpose. Make the world a better place by solving real problems. Still, uh, my purpose. You know, I spend a long time working at this stuff, and it's important. But you know, when you have a purpose like that, getting on the communications lines of the world and helping them resolve barriers to their production, it means that anything you can do can be aligned to it. You know, I had to fly here from Sydney. I'm Australian, as you know, and it's a long flight. But when you're coming and you're coming to give something on your purpose line and you're coming to talk about your purpose, it doesn't matter. You know, sitting there in Delhi airport for six hours on a layover waiting for the next flight. You go, yeah, but you know. So what's your organization's purpose? If you don't know this, find out. If your organization doesn't have a purpose, either make it get a purpose or find an organization that does. I would say make it get a purpose because you're obviously working there for a reason. You obviously like the crowd. But getting a purpose organized in your organization will suddenly align everyone's thoughts. I'll give you a really good example on this. We have our purpose in our company. And then it, what it means is that if one of our staff or one of our team need to make a decision about should I do this or should I do this for a client, they can take that decision, compare it with the purpose, and then come out with the correct answer. Because purpose aligns action. Right? So if, if our purpose is to do that, and then they have to make a decision of should I spend an extra two hours working on this client's product to make it really awesome, or should I just sort of cut the corner? Even though we're not going to get paid for that extra hour, well, they'll do the right thing. They'll put that extra effort in because it aligns with the purpose. It keeps things running. And this is a great way to expand any business. If your purpose of the organization that you work for, if its only stated purpose is making money, you're in trouble. But that won't be the purpose. That might be what's being told about or spoken about, but there'll be an underlying purpose there. There'll be something that you know everyone's there for, it's some reason. If you get that reason spoken about, talked about, written up, put on a wall, it suddenly starts aligning all the actions of the group. Because the group is made up of individuals and all the individuals need to make decisions. So you need to be able to make decisions What's your purpose? If you get nothing from this talk except this one idea, I'd be happy. And that idea is find out what your purpose is and then follow it. Find your purpose. Spend a few hours. It doesn't matter. Just write down different ideas, things that you've liked. And at some point, you'll be writing these down and you'll suddenly go, cool. That's my purpose. And it will be one of those moments. You'll suddenly go, you feel a bit tingling because of the first time you've identified a path that you're going down. And then what you can do is you can take that purpose and you can apply it to your business. I had this friend of mine in Japan who used to, um, he had this job and he had to send his wife off to do some training. And to do that, he had to look after the kid, right? So he got this job in a factory, which he hated. But by working in the factory, he could work his hours in a certain way that it meant he could look after the child and he could earn enough money for the whole family and he could get it all done. So he hated working in the factory, but he actually loved doing it. Why? Because it was aligning with his purpose of supporting and looking after the family and getting it done. And I was talking to him and we're chatting and like this is months after his wife had come back from the training and I said, well, how can I help you? And he says, I hate my job. And I'm like, okay, why are you in the job? And he goes, oh, well, you know, I used to really like it, but now I hate it. I said, oh, well, what changed? And he went, oh, my God, my wife came back. I don't have any reason to work at this crap job anymore. So suddenly, because there was no purpose there, there was no motivation. There was no reason to do it. There was no personal conviction. It suddenly became drudgery. If you're like that in your current job, simply identifying your purpose and then working out how that can align with your current job will make your life at work a thousand times better. Just like that. And if you have a staff member or a team member who's not motivated, who's not doing well, spend some time with them. Help them with, you know, say, look, 
This is what we're doing here. What is it you want to do with your life? Help them align what they want to do with your organization. And your whole morale will improve. And the reason for this is that there is a formula for living. And that formula for living, not life, but living, is having and following a basic purpose. Who knows people that do this, that follow a basic purpose, that sort of are out there and doing stuff? They can be sports stars, they can be anything, right? Those people are living, they're alive, they're spending every day, they seem to be like on fire, right? And then you find people that aren't following their basic purpose, that are just meandering through life. Are they living? No. Or they're alive. But they're not living, they're not enjoying life, they're not experiencing life, they're not expanding as a being. Purpose is really important. So if you've got your purpose, and you know how to win, well how do you succeed? Well it actually just comes down to one word. How to succeed in business is very simple. And it's so simple that a lot of people just don't know about it and don't recognise it. And that one word is exchange. And, no, I don't mean that. <laughs> what do I mean by exchange? Exchange is the act of giving one thing and receiving another. I know, this is really simple, right? But you know what? Some of the biggest companies in the world don't figure this out. Exchange is the process of, say, going to a client, receiving money for what you're about to do, developing the product, and giving them an awesome product. That's exchange. Do you see that? You've received one thing and you've given something back. In the open source world, when I made the mail gem, I'm exchanging. I create the mail gem. I put it out there and you might think, but you don't get anything back. Well, actually I beg to differ, I'm giving a keynote. You get notoriety, you get public reputation. I don't have any problems finding work. So I've got a lot of exchange out of that. You know, if anyone in the world has a serious problem with a mail gem and they want someone to fix it, who do you think they call? So, you get a lot of exchange from these sorts of things. But some of the biggest companies in the world didn't figure this out. And I was talking to, to Charles at dinner, and he mentioned Sun Microsystems. They spent years open sourcing everything, but they never worked out how to exchange for it. They never worked out how to get money back for it. And where are they? They don't exist. Some of, I, there are some really intelligent people working there, but they just violated this one thing. I mean, I mean, it's a bunch of things, but in simplicity, right? They didn't exchange, they weren't exchanging. Your company needs to exchange, your business needs to exchange, and there are levels of exchange that you can work on. The first one is rip-off or criminal exchange. So criminal exchange is accepting something and giving back nothing, or giving back something of no value, right? So. Everyone has experienced this or no clients that have experienced this. We had a client that came to us who had spent $150,000 trying to get a website online over four years with three rewrites. It wasn't even a complex website. We sat down and we saw this and we went, you know what? This is just so wrong that we're just gonna go beyond and beyond and fix it. So I put three guys on it and we rewrote the whole thing in two weeks and put it online. And he was just like, whoa. And I said, I've done that because your experience is not what the Ruby community is about. I obviously charged him some money, but we went beyond the call of duty, right? But he had received ripoff exchange. And what that meant was that he was very, very wary about every other developer he ever met. Because all he knew was that that developer would rip him off. He would give them money, $150,000 worth, and he would receive nothing back. When you're working and when you're developing, make sure that you're not operating at that level. It might look like you get a lot of money, but if you don't return anything, you're not going to live long. The next level is partial exchange. So you receive some money and you return something that's, you know, not too good. It's broken, doesn't work, doesn't do what it's meant to do. The tests are failing. The application doesn't have a readme in it that tells you how to start the process. You know, it's a product but it's not a full product, it's not what it could be. The next level up is fair exchange. So fair exchange is receive $1,000, you deliver $1,000 worth of production. It's fair. That's what most corporate organizations expect people to operate at. It's fair exchange. 
But the next level is exchange in abundance. Exchange in abundance is where you deliver something more than what you've received. It doesn't mean you're delivering for free, but you're delivering something with an aesthetic or something. I'll give you a good example. This. The Apple products are exchange in abundance. They're expensive, but they have a design about them. They have an aesthetic about them. They have something that when you buy it, you feel like you've received more than what you've paid for it. Which one of those will generate the most profit for your business? It's not a trick question. Four. Exchange in abundance. I'll give you a good example from my business. I had this client who came to us to ask us to quote for a website, right? And we go through a whole process and I started talking to him and I found out that he had some issues and I talked him through those issues and really got into communication with him and made sure that he really understood the problem in front of him. It took me a couple of hours. And then he called me back four days later and he said, look, I love your proposal, but we've actually got someone who's going to come on board and for a shareholding do it for 50% of your price. So I can't use it. And I went, oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. Look, go for it. That sounds great. And he said, but I really appreciate the work you gave me. Do you know what happened? A week later, because I'd exchanged in abundance with him, right? A week later, this person calls me and says, look, this person's recommended you as the best Ruby developer in Australia. It was a guy that I had never done any development for who shafted me to go work for someone else at 50% my price. But he was so impressed and so happy with the exchange that I'd given him that he was recommending me to other people. I've had three recommendations of new clients from that one product. This is where exchange and abundance works. And it always works. Because word of mouth spreads faster than any marketing campaign. Exchange and abundance doesn't mean delivery for free. It doesn't mean reducing your rates. That's not what it's about. We charge a lot of money for our development. We're not cheap. No, we're not. Our clients tell us we're not cheap. They ask us to reduce our price and we say no. But when we do deliver, we make sure we deliver beyond what they expect. And if for some reason in our organization, we don't deliver that, I then make it right. I'll put a developer on for a week to make it work properly or fix it or do whatever I can so that that client has full faith in that production. And you can all do this too. It's not rocket science, it's just caring enough about the product and getting it done. But does this also mean that you delete all free stuff? No. Because open source is a good example of exchange that's done for free. And getting out there and helping the community and doing that sort of thing is valuable. You just gotta make sure that when you're doing your exchange in abundance, you're doing it at the right level for the right market, for the right people you're delivering it to. If it's a client, take their money, deliver an awesome product. If you're doing it for the open source world, deliver an awesome product and get back admiration or whatever it is you're doing it for, or help, or whatever. If you've got a job and a desk, work out how that fits in with the whole organization and exchange an abundance on it. Go beyond. And if you do that, you win. So there is a definition for exchange and abundance. Here one does not give two for one or free service, but gives something more valuable than money was received. All right? So exchange and abundance is not going to McDonald's and getting the two for one offer. That's not exchange for abundance, right? They're doing that as a direct marketing ploy to get you into their shop to spend more money. Right? You're not getting an abundance of exchange. Exchange and abundance is not going, well, we used to charge $150 an hour for development, now we're going to charge $75. That's not exchange and abundance. Why? Because next year you will be out of business. And then you can't exchange at all. Exchange and abundance is going, you know, we charge $150 now, we're actually going to change that to $160, $170, and with that extra profit, we're going to really deliver. <coughs> we're going to deliver so awesome that our clients just go, my God, you guys are awesome. Make sense? Once you start exchanging in, a product, in abundance, you're getting this thing called production. You're delivering things. And production is the basis of morale. That's a really good data. If you have anybody around you who's not producing, what's their morale like? You know, you see a guy sitting at the desk and they're like this. 
and you go, hey, what's happening? It goes, ah, oh, you know, can't seem to get this thing done. The bug doesn't resolve. Useless. <laughs> Our spec is just going, fuck, at the evil day. And then you go to the other developer and he's like, you go, hey, what's up? He goes, ah, oh, what do you mean, what's up? Hey, I just shipped the code, dude. <laughs> Obviously, he's got more morale. He's more excited. He's getting things done. He's producing. Exchange gives you production. Production gives you morale. If you're feeling down and out in your job, and you're feeling bored, or you're feeling demotivated, go and produce something. Doesn't matter what it is. Like, literally, it doesn't matter. Go sweep the bathroom. It doesn't matter what you do. Do something. And if you do something, suddenly you'll feel a bit brighter, feel a bit lighter, feel a bit happier. You know, sometimes when I'm getting hit by the problems of life, and I get to that point where all you want to do is just sit on the couch and watch cricket reruns from 1948. I don't think I've ever done that. That would be interesting. The way I solve that is I just go and force myself, like I literally go like this, carry myself over to a desk, put myself down, log into, say, the mail gem, and go handle five or six pull requests. That's why if you look at the pull request history on the mail gem, it sort of goes like this, right? Bing! <laughs> Bing! Because I normally, I do mail to get some exchange back in. Then I release another gem, then I make a commit to the Rails library, and I update the version of the gem, and I go, yeah, I'm awesome, good. Let's get rolling. And then you can just get going on whatever it is, it is you do. It's another awesome reason to contribute to open source. Because open source development is totally under your control. You don't have to wait for your boss to say you can do a good product. You can just do it. And that increases your morale. And that increases your ability. And when you're excited, when you're happy, when you're delivering, when you've got exchange in, your ability to handle problems suddenly becomes really easy. You know? Who's experienced that? Where they've hit a bug, and it's like impossible. And then some other time when they were doing really well, it just seemed that all the code was bug free. Right, yeah, good. I know. At least he's honest. But that's true. When you're producing really well, you don't have problems. So I was just giving some examples. So in summary, the definition of success, the accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. Purpose is a reason for which something's done or created, or for which something exists. The formula for living, not life, but living, is having and following a basic purpose. The conditions of exchange, where you want to be, is exchange in abundance. Get your organisation up to that, and you'll be a very happy person. And then finally, do something that you believe in. Make a difference. And if you do that, you will win. Any questions? Thank you very much. I think I've got about two or three minutes if there are any questions. If not, as I said, I am going to be here all day. Come and hit me up. The funny thing about this sort of stuff is usually any question is usually quite personal and I can understand that. So it's pretty rare for me to actually get questions after it. Oh, there is a question. I have a question. Uh, you know, it's, it's good. You're talking about the fact that So there was a recent, did everyone get the question? Yep. Yeah. So there was a recent um, survey done in Australia that had a look at what the reasons were that people left their jobs, right? The top reason of that was management. The third or fourth reason was they got a better offer for money, right? If you are a developer and you want to get out there and you get a, a better offer or a better job, only take it if it aligns with your purpose. You know, if, if you're a Java developer full time and your purpose is doing open source web applications that you know change the world, 
then, and you get an offer to do a Ruby job, do it. You know, it aligns with your purpose. But that's how you can recognize it. Once you work out what your purpose is, you can start, um, decisions become really simple. Because you, you get an idea in. Like for a personal experience, we have companies come to us and say, hey, can you take a shareholding in this really great idea that I have, and you can develop it for free and in exchange for you 50%, right? I can look at that incoming idea, and I can go, well, does that relate to our purpose as an organization, yes or no? And instantly, 99% of the time it doesn't, so I just get rid of it, right? But it gives you a, a basis to make these sorts of decisions once you start working out your own purpose. Does that answer the question? Good. Okay then. So yeah, come and see me afterwards if you want any other answers or data. And thank you very much, you've been awesome.